Hello and welcome to another edition of Teacher Talks Second Grade. And I've got an awesome book for review for you today. I Survived the Shark Attacks of 1916. Very cool story. I just finished it right now. And uh, once again, this author has done a beautiful job of blending fiction with nonfiction to make a fun, engaging, non-terrifying uh explanation and story of uh, these real attacks that happened. And so, uh, Lauren, if you ever listen to this channel, I apologize. I've done a few book re reviews for you and um, or of the books that you've done, and I seem to mess up or change the way I pronounce your last name every time. So today I'm going to go with Lauren Tarshis. Tarshis. I think that might be what it is. Anyway, Lauren, hey, what a great job on this series. Absolutely love it. And more importantly, the second graders in my class, my high readers, really love this book. Speaking of high readers, <clears throat> you can see right here in the upper right corner, I label and level all of my books on the guided reading level. This one is a level R, which puts us at about a middle of fourth grade. So this book here is only for about half of my class that is reading at those higher levels. Um, as a second grade teacher for more than seven years now, the most important thing, in my opinion, as far as reading and improving reading is getting books at their independent level, which means a book that that student can read all by themselves, maybe struggling on a word or two a page, but that's about it. And just give them high volume, read, read, read like crazy. You'll know the book's too hard if they lose understanding, or you'll know the book's too hard if they read for 10 minutes and they're having to fight through the book and then they are distracted. So if they're distracted, there's a very good chance that that book is too hard for them, especially this series here, because if you can read this level, these are engaging books. I just did a review a week ago or so on 9-11, the I Survived 9-11, so check out that one as well. And the best way to do that is to go ahead and subscribe to this channel, and uh, you'll be able to see this book series. My plan is to do each one of these books. And you'll also be able to see a whole bunch of other books that I've done. The Who Would Win book series is on there. It seems to be a big hit right now, along with every Dave Pilkey book I can possibly get my hands on. So let's dive deeper into I Survived the Attacks of 1916. So <clears throat> I'm going to read the back of the book to you. We'll talk about the book a little bit. I've got a couple highlighted spots that um, explain the real story of the shark attacks of 1916 so we can make sure that we can differentiate between what is the fiction part of the book and what is the non-fiction part of the book, which I think is really important for the kids to understand. So let's go ahead and flip to the back and let's go ahead and read this. There's something in the water. Chet Roscoe is finally feeling at home in Elm Hills, New Jersey. He has a job with his uncle Jerry at the local diner. Three great friends and the perfect summertime destination. Cool, refreshing, Matawan Creek. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. But Chet's summer is interrupted by shocking news. A great, white shark, a great white shark has been attacking swimmers along the Jersey Shore, not far from Elm Hills. Everyone in town is talking about it. So when Chet sees something in the creek, he's sure it's his imagination until he comes face to face with a bloodthirsty shark. Very, very cool. And uh, again, just so engaging for you teachers and parents out there. Um, you probably know the importance of a good book series and a series like this where most of the books are at the same level or close to it. So this book series lives in the kind of fourth grade realm here. Um, some a little higher, some a little lower, but about fourth grade reading. And if you can read one of these books, you kind of can read all of these books, even though the GRL might be a little higher or lower. But just uh, th this author does a wonderful job of engaging the students, she always kind of starts the book out with a real great hook, if you will, on kind of what happens towards the end of the story. And then she kind of backs up and says, all right, let's lead up to that with uh, the few days or weeks prior to that event. And again, it's uh, definitely a blend of fiction and nonfiction. And while the main parts of the story are true, a lot of the characters um, are completely made up and a lot of the activities the characters do, especially like leading up to the events, um, will be fic uh, fictitious or uh, fictitious, sorry. 
It's a little early here in my household. Anyway, let me, let me jump to a couple of the highlighted areas. So after, after the students read the book or your kiddo reads the book, <clears throat> they get to the back of the book. And, and one of the things that I have kind of questioned myself on is, all right, what's, what's the fiction and what's nonfiction in this character named Chet who went through these events? Uh, what, what part of it's true and not true? So what this author does a great job of is she, um, at, the, at the back of each one of these books, has a couple sections. And the first thing she'll do is tell you the real true events of what happened. So for this one, the shark attacks of 1916, the unbelievable true story. And that way your students can read this and really understand, all right, there's what really happened. Here's the story that she told. And while it's embellished a little bit and the characters are drawn out a little bit to make it more exciting and engaging, the overall big picture is, you know, the true story is there that is sort of blended into the fictitious uh, story. So it's very, very cool. So um, great job on that. And the I Survived, I just did it like a week ago. It, again, it was that same sort of style of the fiction, nonfiction blended. And then at the back of the book, it does tell the true story of 9-11 as well as uh, some of the facts. And after the true story of this, then this author also goes in and tells some information about facts. So really, really cool. And she's explaining that back in these days, they used to laugh at shark attacks because in 1916, at least on the east coast of the United States, sharks were thought to be basically mild-tempered and they would never uh, attack human beings. They, uh, in fact, I think they said their jaws weren't even strong enough to really do any damage. And obviously today we know that is certainly not the case. So really cool, interesting facts about sharks and kind of explaining in a, again, non-terrifying way for your kiddos that, uh, that these sharks are obviously something to be respected, but also it kind of explains that, you know, you shouldn't be terrified of going into the ocean, that if you look at the number of people who are killed by snake bites versus the number of people who are killed by sharks, it's um, alarming how many, either how few people are killed by sharks or how many are killed by snakes. But I think the big picture is that shark attacks, especially that result in death, are pretty, uh, pretty minimal in the big picture. But a uh, very, very cool book with this book series. If you're a teacher or a parent, I would kind of caution you. This is one that I think you should read these books before you give them to your students. They may come out a little bit, well, they may have some questions and they may be a little bit confused on exactly what was true and not true and and you can kind of remind them and show them the back of the book and, and explain to them, you know, that this is true and, and here's the parts that we want to take away from it and here's the parts we want to make sure we're not too scared about. But you talk about engaging. I mean, each one of these real life events that took place, author does a wonderful, wonderful job of blending them in again to that uh, fiction and nonfiction blended together. But real life event, uh, events that, you know, somewhere between 8 and 12 years old, I think our students should understand the, some of the history that's gone on, whether it's shark attacks, 9-11, you know, this one here is about uh, the Nazi invasion. So, you know, real life events that these kids, you know, they're going to probably see it on TV, on Discovery Channel, something like that. And why not have it brought to them in a really kid-friendly way through these books? So again, the caution is, as a parent, as a teacher, read the books first, decide where your kiddo is at. For some of the kids in my classroom, and even my own child who's eight years old, um, you know, the maturity level that they're at might be something that you want to think about. Do they have nightmares at night? You know, is this going to get their imagination going wild? Well, maybe it's something you want to consider. Maybe it's something you want to think about. All right, friends. So listen, I'm going to end with this. If you leave a comment and let me know which one you want me to review next, I will definitely consider it. So again, I have already done uh, this one on 9-11. But I'll kind of let you browse through these a little bit and tell me which one you want me to do a book review on. And I will be happy to do that for you. Very cool. All right, friends. Again, if you have not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. It helps me out a whole ton. doesn't cost you anything. And uh, really helps me out to make sure I can continue to do these book reviews and, uh, and have some fun with it. All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.